everybody. This is uh, Omar Khalifa at iAccelerate, and we are here with another session of iAccelerate Remote, where we speak to founders of companies that have come through the iAccelerate program, and we talk to them about their business and how the um, issues to do with COVID and uh, have impacted their business and how they may be moving forward. So this is a way for us to help maybe some of you also understand how you can cope with these uh, strange and challenging times that we're all about. Welcome, Helen. It's great to see you. And you. Uh, and we'd like to maybe start off by, if you describe a little bit more about your business and how you got started. So um, I've been an information systems academic for a long time and always been interested in how people can use technology for um, social purposes. Um, and then oh, a bit over 10 years ago, I became a carer for my husband and realized how um, disconnected and isolated people could get in that situation without the technology. So we started aged care facilities that uh, we approached to to um, look at how old people in their care were using technology, um, said they'd been researched to death, they didn't want us to come in and do any more research. So they, we said, well, how about we just come in and run uh, group sessions to help them? And we just observed what happened. So they said, oh yeah, that'd be fine. Um, you know, No problem with that. Didn't look like research and people were getting something out of it. And about 10 years ago or so that I started doing that down at Milton, um, I've got a holiday place near there, so it was nice I could go down and do the sessions on Friday and then stay there for the weekend. And that group's still sort of going too, um, 10 years later. So I did some research um, and then uh, as it got closer to my retirement, I started to think about how um, we could put this into practice. I've always wanted to be more, um, uh, I hate writing papers that nobody's going to read. I'd rather put my research into practice. So two bits of research. One is, um, you know, how do people use the technology and, and the technology is changing all the time, making it easier for people to use. The other thing I was always interested in is how to run a community organisation as a network of, of um, different people down the coast of, of New South Wales to do this. And I was always, I worked with Defence at one stage and they were looking at network centric organisations in Defence for patrols in in uh, war zones and so on and how they could sort of work together. So those two things came together. I tried to get some research funding, then I tried to get some um, uh, grants and so on. Um, the one that came along was was the opportunity to work at iAccelerate. Um, so we looked at how, what we wanted to do would fit into iAccelerate. And uh, I think I remember the interview, you asking me some help with for your mother or something, had an iPad that she, wasn't listening too carefully to what you were trying to get her to do. Um, so it, that was, you know, two or three years ago now. And, and iAccelerate's been a really good place for us to get um, uh, enough structure to our business so that it, it's um, sustainable and viable, but also the flexibility to be a, a network that just goes and finds what needs to be done and find people to do it and put them together. We've been helping older people in all sorts of situations, um, in aged care facilities, local uh, community uh, uh, organisations, local, um, you know, all sorts of people. We do a session up in the Winnable IRSL. Um, we were doing that before COVID struck. And then we started last year, got a big grant to help people in their homes. So we were doing home visits. And of course, at the beginning of this year, um, suddenly the uh, aged care facility said, no, you can't come anymore. The local community centres said, uh, you know, no, we're closed. Um, and uh, home visits were really not the advisable. Um, so we had all sorts of um, reflections on, on what we were doing and uh, we decided just to go as we could online and do everything online. We had the, the um, expertise to do it. And so, you know, earlier this year when we were shut off from everything else, we decided to try and, and do mimic what we were doing face-to-face -face, um, in an online environment. So, uh, if we can get them into this Zoom environment, this video environment, then it's so much easier to help them. So we've been um, running five sessions a week. Um, they were sort of based on geography for a start, but now it really doesn't matter who comes to what. Older people come in for a bit of help. Uh, we try and match them up and put them into breakout rooms on Zoom. And so they sit there one-on-one, -on -one, share screens and chat away. Not always about the technology. Um, one group came back the other day and said, oh, did, did you learn anything? And they said, oh, no, we just were chatting about family history. So it was one of the um, uni students and, and one of the guys lived down the coast. Um, so I think that's just that social interactions is as important as sort of learning about the technology and 
and being able to do it. But yeah, well, it's interesting. I mean, I think you're, you're such a great example of, you know, a researcher who decided to basically say, okay, I've, I've done the research. I understand how this could work now. It's time for implementation. Um, and I think we're, we're hearing, you know, other stories like that now. And I think more people in the, from, who come from a research background are beginning to understand that it's almost like seeing it through rather than saying, okay, I've done the research now, hand it over to someone else to do it. Um, you might have not found somebody else to, to basically hand off to, so you just went ahead and, and did it yourself, and I think it's a great, uh, a great model. How many people do you think have gone through overall uh, over the last uh, two to three years of your program? Could you estimate well, that? Yeah, okay, so officially, um, we, most of our funding has come from the federal government, and um, to being very bureaucratic, um, that's one of the, we, we get a lot of funding and, and bureaucracy involved, which is the opposite of our culture, so it's a really like, but they count the number of people we help by the number we register on our learning platform that they're set up for older people. And uh, even though um, it's a, not the best learning platform, um, we sort of ask all our clients to register on that um, just to count heads. Um, and we've got um, over seven or 800 people that have already been gone through our programs. Um, not, not all of them have actually registered with our organisations. We sometimes do some um, work for other people that don't show up on our official statistics, but I mean, we must be pretty close to a thousand people by now, I think, that have actually been involved with our group somewhere and uh, come in for some help. Yeah, it's amazing how you were just, I mean, somewhere so timely that people needed to get these new skills just yeah. at this time more than ever, especially elderly people might feel more you know, isolated than, uh, than they were previously and not able to get out and so forth. Um, but what, were this, what was the challenge of the fact that, you know, you, in some ways you needed to help people get online and yet yeah. you have, now you have to be online to get the help to get on to be better <laughs> online. How, so how do you manage, did you manage that transition? Okay, so we always had a trouble getting in touch with the people who needed our help because, you know, we could advertise on, um, uh, we, we used to put a notice in the advertiser and that got us a lot of people, but basically it was contacting families or aged care providers. So it was always hard to directly contact the our target audience. Um, and so uh, we, we've just got all the people, um, we keep records of everyone that we help. Um, probably about half of those we'll have email addresses for and so on. So we've just created these email addresses and said, look, all of you down in the Yurubadala, who we've got a groups at Curious Heads and at um, Browley down there, we've got a, we've just been emailing them saying, look, come Thursday 1.30, any of you people that want to get on together, um, you know, this is how you do it. We, we give them um, some instructions. We say uh, it will open um, the meeting about half an hour early. If anyone's having trouble, they want to uh, give us a ring and we'll talk you through it. Um, so we've managed to get quite a lot of people. Some of them pick it up real quick. Uh, so there was one lady, Anne, down from uh, Curious the other day. She, um, she'd never been on Zoom before, but um, she got on and figured out what it was all about and then wanted instructions on how to run her own meeting so that she could get a uh, bit other people struggle a bit, uh, but uh, you know it's 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 um, it's basically not. We, we we picked Zoom because it's probably the easiest one to get people on, and just to look on the face when suddenly the video comes up and they can hear you talk. They say, "Oh, it's not so bad." <laughs> you know, we can do this, and um, you know, so it's it sort of worked. Um, it's uh, and we're hoping that it's not just a temporary thing. We we really want to say, well. Um, you know, if we get a chance to see anybody, we are sort of opening up a little bit with some people face to face occasionally, or got access somehow. They've got people who can go in and help them get their Zoom set up. It's slow and one on one, but we've mostly been working one on one. I know the numbers sound big, but you know, most of the work we do is one person sitting with somebody else, helping them with whatever they want. So we've never run classes or anything like that. They can do that at libraries and so on. Um, but so it's amazing how you can. Sometimes it might take half an hour or so to get someone, talk someone through it, but quite often the end result's good. It's, it's, it's wonderful, isn't it? Um, so, so do you think what uh, people are using it for now is quite different than what was before? I mean, you talked about the people are on Zoom now. Was, was that the original intent or was it just, was it more doing their bank statements and other things earlier and now it's more yeah. about the communication? No, I wish we'd known that this was, well, we sort of did. Um, one of the things that I was doing towards the end of last year a year, um, particularly with all of our places down the coast, um, was showing them how to install apps on their phones. A lot of people, you know, got a, actually a, a new smartphone and suddenly realised there's all these icons on there and they wanted to get rid of them all because they didn't understand them. Um, but um, we got them to put the fires near me and the live traffic and all those um, uh, 
you know, apps from the, um, uh, but to help them if they were bushfires and, and I'm hoping they actually um, did a lot of good and got them to put all their photos up in the cloud. Um, and uh, so we started to do some of these things then with them showing that then the benefits and I think with the bushfires, a lot of people realise just how valuable some of these connecting technologies are. Um, so I think that in some ways helped us uh, get more people to you know, take an interest in, in joining and, and so on. So, um, and now definitely anyone that we actually see, the first thing we do, if we, we're sending out computers to people down the coast, we always have Zoom installed and send them instructions on how to contact us either on Skype or Zoom. Um, so that you know we're pushing that as a, a first step, a necessary step now to be able to connect, particularly with people who are isolated. You know, far in little villages, well, I just sent four computers down to Wind Windham, which is just near um, Bega, uh, through the hub down there. Uh, and uh, you know, um, I posted those down to them, but all the laptops have Zoom, and and um, you're just encouraging them. Uh, one of the things that really I would, the government, the aged care providers, is providing good internet access. So I'd have spent a lot of time trying to, to persuade people in government that, you know, good internet access all over the country is important, particularly in the more remote places. Um, and, uh, and also, you know, getting people so that they, you know, it's much easier to connect them if the connection's good. If it's dropping out all the time, it makes an extra level of complexity, it makes things difficult. So to, so, and, and the technology is getting so easy to use. Helen, I think it's sort of as a wrap up, I mean, you know, the, the other founders of businesses who would be listening in and looking at your amazing story, um, re reflecting back on how you've come through all of this, um, what are maybe some of the insights or lessons that you might want to pass on to anyone else who's, who's going through this sort of change and, you know, their model and being challenged by things? What, what has sort of taken you through these things when you thought, oh my goodness, what do I do now? Um, what, what might yeah. you share with others? Yeah, um, I've always, I think even for um, for-profit companies and so on, I've, I've always thought it's important to have people who work in the team or work from bottom to top um, really invested in what we're trying to do. Um, I, you know, so our team members, um, uh, the thing I like most, that at the end of a session, one of them said, um, you know, gee, that was great. I got that, oh, you know, it took a while, but we got that uh, older person to be able to install a, the app that she wanted to and connect to be able to connect to family, you know, they get a thrill out of helping the older people and, and the people that we get as volunteers and team members, uh, they, you know, they're all amazed at, at uh, what, what we do. And, um, and I think even, you know, big companies need to have, have that, uh, you know, that culture of uh, what, knowing the purpose of the, of the organisation and, and the, um, the right motives, being environmentally aware, being, uh, you know, all the sort of uh, things that people now are starting to realise that are important. Uh, I think that's a story that's, uh, that would, I think, translate to almost any founder, any business, is that uh, to get the people aligned with you to help you do things that you, maybe even beyond what you yeah. might be, have envisioned, but they're, they're, as you say, bought in and they're also um, into not only the vision, but also the purpose. And I think yours is a great example of how that all comes together. And even at times of strife like this, you sort of, in some ways, have found a way to, you know, to galvanize all of that into yet a different and uh, you know, motivation for everyone. And it's wonderful what you've done, what, what you've done and what you've accomplished. Um, so, uh, you know, we're, we're really so proud to have you as a, as a member of our of our um, uh, cohort at, uh, at iAccelerate. Um, so this uh, this will wrap it up. And again, thank you, Helen San, for, for for sharing all that with us. And this is Omar Khalifa, um, iAccelerate Remote. We'll see you next time. Thank you.